This is a piece of C45 steel and this is the drawing of the part I would like to make. But first of all, I need a way to grip it to the table. Device won't handle it, it's too small. Neither my clamping clamps will work. I've got to face it at the top. So I decided to make a design in the CAD with a little help of the internet. Two clamps seems to be the solution here. I wanted to make this for a long time, but until today I wasn't able to justify making those for no reason. I won't mention buying. That would be too easy. So the day has come. Using the cool designing features that W3D offers, I made a kinda beefy design. The reference tool makes it easy to give geometric blocks features of a working mechanical structure. This software has its own library of fasteners like screws. I added some V-shaped grooves to improve the gripping ability of the jaw. And then made a drawing out of it. Forty by thirty piece of steel, cold rolled. First of all, some markings for cutting the stock. And now let's breathe in some steel dust. Making dust is done, let's proceed with the painting. I'm going to use my mill to machine the shapes, but those lines will help to keep track if everything is right. Quick coordinates and let's the fun begin. Precision requires human focus. I could make a CNC program to mill the bevels, but there might be a path to do it simpler considering I'd want to make more of them. A 3D printed base with the right angle should do the trick here. Did I compose music with the slicer by any chance? Come on, listen to that. I mean, never mind.
Now with a piece of plastic we should achieve the right angle without no difficult toolpaths. That looks fine I guess. Now the same goes with the jaw. It starts to make sense, I guess. Let's switch to a drill bit now. And another hole. <sighs> Sometimes I miss the quill I sacrificed to attach an encoder on my spindle. There it goes, a new 10mm end mill. Next will be the making of some pockets. Machining with a new sharp high speed tool steel feels really good. Sadly, the tool is too short to reach the bottom, so I had to revert it. A quick, sharp finish touch. And we are ready to dive into threading. Now back to the small jaw. The screw has its place now and I guess it feels comfortable. Now this tool should help add some gripping geometry to the clamp. 60 degrees angle, 3 teeth, carbide. What happened here? Um, well, I guess I didn't need that tip anyway. Let's add some corrosion resistance.
some oil. They say it's needed after cold blowing. And there we have it. Should resist corrosion at least a bit more than before. Does it fit? Granted, we have the clamps, we still need proper T-nuts, which I don't have after like two years of owning a mill. But that's going to change today. Not much to say. Instead of making a wise decision to buy those, I decided to make them. Milling is done, now the holes. All is left is cut them to length and tap the holes with an M10 tap. The T-nuts are ready. I think we've got everything done. Even a bit more than you would think. Actually even more. Let's get back to our C45 steel piece. The two clamps generate vertical and horizontal force when the screw is tightened. Thanks to that I can reach the top surface with the tool and the workpiece is held in place firmly. Some cold rolled steel spacers to raise the steel piece a little bit. Seems rigid, what you say? I'm happy with that. If you're curious what the steel piece is for, don't forget to subscribe. I will share that secret with all my viewers soon.
And if you made until this point, thanks for watching and see you next time.